So next we have Karen, please. Hello. <laughs> Uh, so kia ora koutou, ko Karen tōku ingwa. Um, I've made a personal submission um, today, and I've done um, to speak today, and I do this on, with three hats on. I was a public health physician who was involved in the urban development strategy for Christchurch in 2008, and my role then was looking at the health impacts of the urban development strategy. So I've done a lot of reading and thinking about what matters and what improves health outcomes. The second hat I've got on is I'm a avid cyclist. I don't have a car. I haven't. I have a house with four tamariki, four kids, and a grandmother who's 88 years old. And we manage life without a car, but I've got ideas of how you could make my life easier. <laughs> and the third thing is I'm a researcher. I've done a PhD in community mental health and resilience. I've studied the earthquakes in Christchurch and what makes communities thrive. And I want to give you some. Um, sort of recommendations about what might what you could do even better with a lot of good things you've already got in your long-term plan. Um, some of the things that I think you have done a really good job if we start off thinking about the mental health crisis, one of the things I just want you to know is that 80% of health outcomes are determined outside of the health sector. So we can design fancier hospitals and get more cardiac care and you know, Zappers and Brighton Beach, but actually what will make more of a difference is your long-term plan. And I really just want you to think, what do we do? Because actually the hands of Christchurch population is in the long-term plan. One of the biggest things that I found when I was involved with the Christchurch City Council and, and the health impact assessment is looking at how to build community connections. Some of the ways that happens is in um, looking at ways to help make people easy to meet each other. And some of the communities that did really well were those um, like Addington, like inner city east, where there's good community cottages, where there's a really strong community gardens. And having infrastructure seems to make a really big difference. And so some, country, some parts of the country, like um, Papua Nui, didn't do as well as you would expect given the economic advantage that suburb has because they didn't have such strong structures. And so that's one of the things I haven't seen enough of in what I've seen of the long-term plan. And I'd really rate you looking at how do we make it easy for communities to meet each other, build relationships, and that's what gets people through crises because we're going to have floods and we're going to have lots of crises. The second big thing is to do more for active transport. I really love it that you've got um, a significant budgets for cycleways. I volunteer Aranui Bike Fix Up. I do lots and lots of supporting kids to bike more. But we do need more. I've had two fractures in the last two years because of pedestrians on cycleways. Oh, there's another fracture. So I just, we really have got enough cyclists that we shouldn't be having people charging through Hagley Park on bicycles and scooters and feet. Um, I think this is a, one of the leading cities we've chosen with my husband to relocate here because we love the cycleways, but it's not, we need to do more. And then the other, um, some of the other things which I think you all know as well as single use cycleways, but we need to make it easy. We have an e-tandem and we pick up um, my mother from the airport, but it's quite hard to get up Memorial Ave in a tandem with a trailer to carry the gear. It's quite hard to live without a car still in Christchurch. So, um, and when I teach at the university, I'm a lecturer at the University of Canterbury, the biggest thing that students talk about why they don't cycle, and it's really surprisingly few students who cycle, is safety. So I just, I think there's lots more to be done, and I really, really support you putting more funding for cycleways, because we've got, a, as well as the climate crisis, we've got an obesity crisis, and we know that active transport makes a difference. And then my third big request is making public transport easier to use. I really love taking my dog out to the beach, but I can't get the dog on the bus. And when I had these broken arms last year, I couldn't get myself and the dog out to the beach. There's, that's just a minor thing, but there's lots of ways to make buses more, more useful. So um, as someone without a car, I really think that some of the biggest things you could do is increase the rates of parking in the central city. That's worked really, really well in Singapore and London. I know that most people don't like the idea of parking prices going up, but we've got to do something to stop car use. I also think that there's um, lots of other things you could do, like just make less parking available, make it more and more difficult to go by car. So um, 
I'll stop there and just let you know that I really think that your long-term plan's got lots of great things, but you have got the hands, in your hands is the health of Canterbury and really support you doing things that improve health outcomes. Wonderful, Karen. Thank, thank you very much. Right on time. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we have Mary, please.